Ladies and gentlemen, the next short film is actually a part of the video I'm making about relock pistols, which will be later online this week. And uh, I have a particular reason for not posting it as the part of the complete project, because it's about casting lead, which is sometimes treated not so friendly by YouTube nowadays. So if I want to be safe, then I have to treat it as a different, separated project. So ladies and gentlemen, please follow me to the wood, because we have such a beautiful weather outside there. And let me show you how traditional it can be when you're making your lead for these beautiful wheel lock pistols. If you have fire, you have everything. And the forest gives you nearly everything that you need to make your own campfire, like bush grass, which is excellent for tinder. Collect some and let it dry in your pockets. Just a handful will be enough for your nest. If you see some birchwood, peel off some of its bark, as it is full of natural oils, catches fire easily and burns at a hot temperature. Excellent for feeding the first flames of the tinder. When you have to make a fire in rainy weather or on a cold winter day like this, you will need some isolation on the ground. So cut a few branches and prepare a bed for your fire. You will surely need some handful of dry, thin branches as well to catch the first flames. Even if the weather is damp, the inside of the logs are always dry, so split some in thin pieces and use the inner ones in the beginning. Later the damp ones will also dry on the flames once the fire is strong enough. Also make sure to clean the snow from the ground as it absorbs the heat of your fire. The melting snow can also moisten your wood, which is not good either. If your logs are in line with the direction of the wind, it will be much easier to feed oxygen to the flames. Prepare also a few feather woods, as this will instantly catch the flames of the birch wood bark. Put everything in handy distance, as when the tinder caught fire, you will have to act quick. Now comes your flint and steel kit that you always keep safe in a dry compartment of your baggage. I always have a few dozens of char cloth in my kit. It catches the sparks easily and smolders on a hot temperature. Now it is time to make your tinder nest. I make a nest from phloem and put the bush grass in the middle where I will put the smoldering char cloth. Don't be scrimpy, give it enough material. You will have to find a sharp edge on the stone that can cut enough hot metal chips from the steel. Feed the smoldering with some blows of air and put it in the middle of your nest. Now start blowing it until it glows hot, but be careful you can easily blow the flames as well. Be calm and gentle to revive the fire. First goes the birch wood bark, then the thin branches, then the feathered splits and then the large ones. I have a little field kit for casting lead, a ski source time mold from Rapine and a cast iron folding lead ladle. I also have some cast of lead bullets in my bag rather than having a large block in my bag.
When the lead starts to melt, you can easily skin off the slag on the surface. I also place the mold close to the fire to preheat it. For the wheelock project I need two type of round balls, with and without the spur. The lead in my level is enough for 5-6 balls, so this little fire was enough for the job. But if you wanna cast more, then you will need a more serious fire for sure. Casting lead on open fire is not as comfortable and precise as with an electric furnace indoors. But what the heck, spending the day in the snow worth it anyway. So thank you very much for watching, stay tuned for more later this week. And also please don't forget to hit the subscribe button down there if you like what I do. Also if you wish and if you can, then you can support me on Patreon. And if you follow the link to my Patreon site, you can also check out which other platforms my videos will be available soon. So until next time, stay cool and keep your powder dry.